Little Briar Rose A long time ago, there were a king and a queen who said every day, Ah, if only we had a child, but they never had one. But it happened that once when the king was bathing, a frog crept out of the water onto the land and said to her, Your wish shall be fulfilled. Before a year has gone by, you shall have a daughter. What the frog said came true, and the queen had a little girl who was so pretty that the king could not contain himself for joy and ordered a great feast. He invited not only his kindred friends and acquaintance, but also the fairies, in order that they may be kind and well disposed toward the child. There were thirteen of them in this country, but as he had only twelve golden plates for them to eat out of, one of them had to be left home. The feast was held with all manner of splendor, and when it came to an end, the fairies bestowed their magic gifts upon the baby. One gave virtue, another beauty, a third riches, and so on, with everything in the world that one can wish for. When eleven of them had made their promises, suddenly the thirteenth came in. She wished to avenge herself for not having been invited, and without greeting or even looking at anyone, she cried with a loud voice, The king's daughter, in her fifteenth year, shall prick herself with a spindle and fall down dead. And without saying a word more, she turned round and left the room. They were all shocked, but the twelve, whose good wish still remained unspoken, came forward, and as she could not undo the evil sentence but only soften it, she said, It shall not be death, but a deep sleep of a hundred years, into which the princess shall fall. The king, who had wished to keep his dear child from the misfortune, gave orders that every spindle in the whole kingdom shall be burnt. Meanwhile, the gifts of the wise women were fulfilled on the young girl, for she was so beautiful, modest, sweet-tempered, and wise that everyone who saw her was bound to love her. It happened that on the very day when she was fifteen years old, the king and queen were not at home, and the maiden was left in the palace quite alone. So she went round into all sorts of places, looked into rooms and bedchambers just as she liked, and at last came to an old tower. She climbed up into the narrow winding staircase and reached a little door. A rusty key was in the lock, and when she turned it, the door sprang open. There in the little room sat an old woman with a spindle, busily spinning flax. Good day, old dame, said the king's daughter. What are you doing here? I'm spinning, said the old woman, and nodded her head. What sort of thing is that, which rattles round so merrily, said the maiden, and she took the spindle and wanted to spin too. But scarcely had she touched the spindle when a magic decree was fulfilled, and she pricked her finger with it. And, in that very moment when she felt the prick, she fell down upon the bed that stood there and lay in a deep sleep. This, deep, this sleep extended over the whole palace. The king and queen, who had just come home, and had entered the great hall began to go to sleep, and the whole of the court with them. The horses, too, went to sleep on the stable. The dogs in the yard, the pigeons upon the roof, and the flies on the wall, even the fire that was flaming on the earth, became quiet and slept. The roast meat left over frizzling, and the cook, who was just going to pull the hair of the scullery boy because he had forgotten something, let him go and went to sleep. And the wind fell, and on the trees before the castle, not a leaf moved again. But round the castle, there began to grow a hedge of thorns. Every year, it became higher, and at last drew close up round the castle and all over it, so that there was nothing of it to be seen, not even a flag upon the roof. For the story of the beautiful sleeping Briar Rose, for so the princess was called, went around the country so that from time to time king's sons came and tried to get through the thorny hedge into the castle, but they found it impossible, for the thorns held fast together as if they had hands, and the youth were caught in them, and could not get loose again, and died a miserable death. After long, long years, again in a king's son came into the country. He heard an old man talking about the thorn hedge and that a castle was said to stand behind it, which a wonderfully beautiful princess named Briar Rose has been asleep for a hundred years. 
And the kings and queens and the whole court were asleep likewise. He had heard too from his grandfather that many king's sons had come and had tried to get through the thorny hedge, but they had remained sticking fast in it and so had died a pitiful death. Then the youth said, I am not afraid. I will go and see the beautiful briar rose. The good man might dissuade him as he would, but he did not listen to his words. But by this time, the hundred years has just passed. The day has come when Briar Rose is to awake again. When the king's son came near the thorn hedge, it was nothing but large and beautiful flowers, which parted from each other on their own accord and let them pass unhurt. Then they closed again behind him like a hedge. In the castle yard, he saw horses and spotted hounds lying asleep. On the roof sat the pigeons with their heads under their wings, and when he entered the house, the flies were asleep on the wall. The cook in the kitchen was still holding out his hand to seize the boy, and the maid was sitting by the black hen which she was going to pluck. He went on further, and in the great hall he saw the whole of the court lying asleep, and by the throne lay the king and queen. Then he went still further, and all was so quiet that a breath could not be heard. At last, he came to the tower and opened the door into the little room where Briar Rose was sleeping. There, she lay so beautiful that he could not turn away his eyes. He stooped down and gave her a kiss, but as soon as he kissed her, Briar Rose opened her eyes and awoke and looked at him quite sweetly. Then they went down together, and the king awoke and the queen, and the whole court, and gazed each other in great astonishment. The horses in the courtyard stood up and shook themselves. The hounds jumped up and wagged their tails. The pigeons upon the roof pulled out their heads from under their wings, looked around, and flew into the open country. The flies on the walls crept again. The fire in the kitchen burned up and flicked and cooked the meat. The joint began to turn and frizzle, and the cook gave the boy such a box on the ear that he screamed. And the maid plucked the fowl ready for the spit. Then the marriage of the king's son and Briar Rose was celebrated with all splendor, and they lived contented to the rest of their days.